Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, teachers and musicians. How are you guys today? Wow, selamat pagi semuanya. Happy New Year juga di tahun yang baru ini ya. Hari Senin tanggal 10 Januari kita kumpul sama-sama secara virtual. And I'm so happy to meet all of you again. I'm Bayu Aditama, your host today. And I would like to welcome you all at our event today. RSL Classical Violin Teacher Workshop with Iskandar Wijaya presented to you by Rock School Indonesia supported by House of Piano, Pesold, Kruitz, and Edgar Ras. Wow, saya mau kenalan dulu dong. Di sini sudah ada banyak sekali yang join sama kita. Boleh dong kasih tahu dulu namanya siapa dan asalnya dari kota mana. Ya, boleh diketik di kolom chat everyone. Boleh saya mulai dulu. Hi, I'm Bayu from Bogor. Wah, saya mau tahu nih kira-kira ada siapa saja di sini. Ada Pak Diki, ada Pak Suwanto, ada Aris Fiorici, lalu juga ada Egi Rusmin, and all of the things. Wow, dari Medan sudah hadir juga pagi hari ini. Thank you, Pak Suwanto. Ada siapa lagi nih selain dari Medan? Ada Panji dari Semarang. Vivi juga dari Semarang. Ada siapa lagi di sini? Ada Yehuda dari Semarang, Soraya, Surabaya. Alexi from California, USA. Wow, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Mungkin kalau di sana evening ya. <laughs> Teresa Fina from Surabaya, Angel Surabaya, Alice Lampung, Jessica Surabaya. Ada Egi dari Banten, wow. Ada Irwan dari Depok, wow. Dari Tangerang juga ada, ya. Yohanes Iwan. Ada Ferry dari Jakarta. Ada Andante Semarang, wow. Banyak sekali nih. Thank you so much guys. Sudah join dari tadi ya. Sudah on time juga sama-sama dengan kita. Ada Yani juga dari Surabaya, wow. Kita nggak sabar untuk bisa ngobrol bareng sama-sama ya. Apalagi hari Hari ini kita kedatangan tamu yang begitu istimewa, a very well-known guest star ya, yang pastinya sudah sangat kita nantikan sama-sama ya. Boleh saya kasih spill sedikit ya bahwa acara ini kan udah jelas ya di titlenya with Iskandar Wijaya. Siapa sih yang nggak tahu seorang Iskandar Wijaya ya kan? Seorang violinist yang udah well-known banget, winner of numerous international competition ya, dan juga mendapatkan a lot of Award salah satunya adalah first golden Julius in the junior Julius category for extraordinary talent in violin playing. Wow, ya dan masih banyak lagi penghargaan yang sudah dia dapatkan. Beliau ini menyelesaikan pendidikannya di Stern Conservatory, Berlin University of the Art, Warner School at the Hochschule for Music Hans Eisler, dan juga later di Joachim Hans. Wow, pokoknya ini pembicaranya luar biasa dan is Dari Wijaya juga tidak akan sendirian, but also will be accompanied by Miss Jelia Megawati Heru, seorang music educator, peraih 16 RSL Awards, including Best Music Studio of the Year RSL Award 2021. Wah, wow, pokoknya hari ini bertabur bintang deh ya. Nah, sebelum kita berjumpa dengan para pembicara yang sangat luar biasa ini, kita akan dengarkan dulu speech from RSL Awards London. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the first uh, webinar for Indonesia for RSL Awards. I am the International Business Development Manager for RSL Awards, Connor Burns. Um, I want to thank you all for attending uh, this special classical violin webinar today. Uh, I hope you find it useful. Uh, I know there's many uh, music teachers and musicians today from over 28 different cities across Indonesia, which is fantastic. So thank you very much for attending uh, and I hope you find it useful. Some special thanks, um, and I'm going to try my best with these names, but if I say them wrong, I'm very sorry, I'm trying my best. First, I would like to thank Iskandar Wijaja, uh, who is an internationally famous, uh, recognized classical violinist, contemporary violinist, and also very passionate about music education and learning. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Miss Jelia Haru, thank you very much, uh, as always, for being the host and knowing everything there is to know about uh, RSL Awards syllabuses. Um, if Miss Haru doesn't know it, then it's not worth knowing. She is fantastic, and I'm sure she'll be able to answer all of your questions. Uh, a thank you as well to Mr. Dickie Salim of the House of Piano. 
uh, for uh, the opportunity to host uh, the, the, the webinar today and also your continued support across the live broadcast across countries. Thanks also to Mr. Leo Sala, the director of PT Citra Itarama, uh, for the ongoing collaborations opportunities that you have with RSL Awards in Indonesia, and always supporting RSL in enlightening uh, Indonesians on uh, musicians and music educators across the country. Thank you very much. There's lots to explore uh, going forward in the future with House of Piano. And of course, thank you to the wonderful marketing team uh, for producing such high quality video production as always. As I say, I hope you find this really useful today. Um, I'm sure you will have lots of questions uh, and queries. And if you do, please uh, contact the Indonesia country representatives, Mr. Andy Jobs, and he will be able to help you in any way that he can. So thank you once again. I hope you enjoy. Bye bye. All right, coming up next, kita akan mendengarkan speech dari Indonesia Country Representative of RSL. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Andy Jobs. Hi, music educator dan sahabat RSL di seluruh Indonesia. Terima kasih untuk dapat hadir untuk pertama kalinya RSL Thailand Classic Workshop untuk grade debut, grade 1 dan 2 bersama uh, bintang tamu kita, Iskandar Wijaya, pada hari ini. Sungguh kehormatan bagi RSL Indonesia dapat bertemu dengan rekan-rekan musik educator, khususnya paling dari seluruh Indonesia yang uh, tidak sering bila terjadi. Terima kasih yang sebesar-besarnya kami ucapkan kepada Pak Leo Saleh, Direktur Utama PT Citra Intirama dan PT Diki, dan Pak Diki, salam dari House of Piano Manager hingga dapat terwujudnya acara ini. Dan juga kepada uh, Miss Jelle Heru yang sudah bersedia untuk menjadi host acara kita dan uh, sekali lagi tentunya kepada Indonesia yang talent musician Iskandar Wijaya yang hari ini mau berbagi kepada guru-guru talent di seluruh Indonesia mengenai metode pengajaran yang dilakukannya terlebih di situasi online saat ini. Selamat mengikuti. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Andy Jobs, yeah, for always initiating such a really remarkable event, yeah. Seperti hari ini juga kita akan belajar sama-sama, get a lot of insight, bukan hanya dari uh, bagaimana RSL menyiapkan silabusnya, tapi juga dapat insight dari seorang Iskandar Wijaya. This is such a really rare moment. Nah, karena kita sudah mendengarkan speeches dari RSL Awards, yeah, baik itu dari London maupun dari Indonesia, means that kita sudah siap untuk berbincang-bincang dan juga dapat materi dari pembicara kita. Tapi sebelumnya boleh dong, kalau misalnya mau segera saya panggilkan pematerinya, yang rame dulu dong nih di kolom chat. Ayo, mana nih suaranya? Siapa yang mau ketemu sama Iskandar Wijaya? Siapa yang udah rindu sama Miss Jelia? Coba dong, mana nih saya, saya, saya? Atau kasih reaction dulu, kasih love dulu. Nah, gitu dong ya. Harus semangat karena kita mau belajar sama-sama starting our year di 2022 ini dengan something really beneficial. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please welcome the moderator of the day, my good friend, Miss Jelia Heru. Hi, Miss Jelia. Hi, Bayu. Apa kabar, Bayu? Baik. Nah, kita lihat di sebelahnya Miss Jelia sudah ada bintang tamu kita. Wow, Iskandar Wijaya. Hi, Iskandar Wijaya. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. Thank you. I'm good. Wow, good to see you too. Tadi kita udah lihat ya opening videonya. Wow, itu betul-betul menyentuh hati dan juga membangkitkan jiwa nasionalisme kita. Dan nanti di akhir juga akan ada special performance loh dari Iskandar Wijaya ya. Oke, okay, without further ado, saya akan berikan kesempatan untuk Miss Jelia untuk bisa berbincang-bincang bersama dengan Iskandar Wijaya. Please enjoy the show. Halo para musik teacher, music lovers, dimanapun Anda berada, kita berjumpa lagi dalam seri webinar yang diselenggarakan oleh RSL Indonesia. Perkenalkan saya, Jelia Megawati Heru, host Anda hari ini. Mungkin sebagian dari Anda yang ikut webinar RSL Indonesia sudah mengenal saya yang muncul dalam seri webinar untuk contemporary piano, classical piano, dan keys. Namun, kali ini saya nggak akan main piano untuk menerangkan silabus RSL melainkan sebagai host yang memandu jalannya webinar kali ini. Dan sebagai bintang tamu atau guest star kita yang spesial, 
super super special hari ini adalah Iskandar Wijaya, seorang violinist asal Jerman dan pemenang berbagai kompetisi internasional. Para music teachers dan music lovers, acara ini terselenggara atas dukungan penuh dari House of Piano, Dharma Wangsa Jakarta, The Main Dealer and Distributor Steinway and Sons, piano legendaris, dan juga Ultimate Rare Music Instrument Dealer and Shop, dan salah satunya juga termasuk Biola. Nah, bagi sebagian kalangan, nama Iskandar Wijaya sudah sangat dikenal, dan reputasinya juga tidak perlu diragukan lagi. Seperti yang disebutkan oleh MC kita hari ini, Bayu Aditama, meskipun demikian, saya ingin menyampaikan uh, beberapa fakta yang mungkin belum banyak orang tahu mengenai Iskandar Wijaya. Iskandar Wijaya di awal tetap mainkan lagu Indonesia Pustaka dan Tanah Airku. Satu fakta bahwa meskipun Iskandar Wijaya malang melintang di Eropa, namun ia tetap mengindonesia. Selain memang mempunyai darah Indonesia dari sang ibu, Bedriana Wijaya yang berasal dari Medan, sang ayah, Ivan Hadar, yang merupakan blasteran Belanda, Arab, dan Maluku, beliau adalah seorang arsitek dan wartawan dari Jakarta Post. Iskandar juga tumbuh besar di lingkungan keluarga musisi. Ibunya adalah seorang pianis di Berlin, Kakeknya Udin Wijaya adalah komposer yang terkenal pada era Presiden Soekarno dan pamannya adalah The Great Norman Wijaya yang seorang dirigen kondang di Jerman. Satu hal lagi yang unik bahwa selain sebagai musisi, Iskandar juga adalah seorang bintang iklan kopi. Betul? Betul. Yaitu JJ Royal Coffee. Nah, uh, nah para musik teacher dan music lover, kita sapa terlebih dahulu sang maestro Iskandar Wijaya. Halo Mas Iskandar, apa kabar? Halo, baik, thank you. Sehat dan fit? Ya, sehat sekali. Tetap semangat ya. ya. Bagaimana rasanya bisa mengunjungi Indonesia lagi di tengah pandemi? Oh, rasa enak sekali. Saya udah lama nggak bisa balik ke sini karena ada pandemi. Terus sekarang um, saya sangat uh, bahagia dan uh, suka banget uh, traveling di Bali, di Jogja, di Solo, di Jakarta juga. Ya. Nah, kalau bicara tentang orkestra, mm -hmm. tadi kan Mas Iskandar main bersama dengan orkestra uh, internasional. Ya, betul. Uh, konotasi orang uh, tentang musik orkestra itu adalah pasti musik klasik ya, mm -hmm. gitu. Mm -hmm. Nah, asosiasi itu tidak 100% true, mm -hmm. ya, karena uh, even you, as as Iskandar Wijaya, mm -hmm. Uh, juga main lagu Indonesia Pustaka, yeah. ya, Tanah Airku, ya, dan itu bukan Paganini, gitu kan, <laughs> atau Beethoven, yeah, ya. Betul. Nah, berarti ada crossover, kan, yeah. dari musik violin, dan crossover ini cocok dengan silebusnya RSL, mm, ya, yeah, very modern. Mm -hmm. Nah, saya ingin tanya, uh, untuk seorang Iskandar Wijaya terhadap uh, silebus biola yang RSL ini, uh, bagaimana? Yeah. Untuk saya, uh, filosofinya, mm. saya tidak suka memisahkan gaya musik. Untuk saya adalah hanya musik. Dan uh, tidak apa, uh, kalau itu gaya pop atau hip-hop atau barok atau klasik, uh, yang penting itu bisa langsung uh, ke hati. Ke hati. Ya, ini filosofi aku. Very great, yeah, very good. Nah, sekarang kita akan memulai pokok bahasan <laughs> webinar kita. Sebelum sampai kepada uraian detail teknis dari RSO Classical Violin Debut, Grade 1, dan Grade 2, saya akan memberikan terlebih dahulu uraian beberapa hal tentang RSO dan non-teknis untuk ujian Classical Violin. Jadi kita bisa lihat di, pada slide. RSO atau Rock School Limited Award adalah sebuah lembaga sertifikasi internasional yang berpusat di London, Inggris. Dari slide Anda dapat lihat bahwa ranah RSO terdiri dari lima departemen. Rock School itu lebih ke non-classical, lebih ke contemporary music, lalu ada PQ, Vocational Qualification, atau pendidikan vokasi. Pendidikan vokasi itu bahasa Indonesia-nya magang, ya, belajar sambil kerja. Lalu ada PAA, uh, slide, the next slide maybe ya, Performing Arts Award, yang lingkupnya adalah Seni Theater. Lalu ada CQ, Creative Qualification Department, and Classical Department. Subjek ujiannya pun sudah sangat lengkap, mulai dari drum, bass, gitar akustik, elektrik, piano contemporary, classical, keys, vocal, music production, dan yang terbaru adalah classical violin. Dan bulan Juli nanti uh, kami ada subjek baru yaitu classical gitar. 
Ya, semuanya lengkap dari debut sampai grade 8. <tuh> Nah, mungkin bisa dilihat pada slide selanjutnya untuk classical violin, materinya mencakup musik tradisional barat, ya, misalnya musik folklore, ada jazz, classical contemporary yaitu format musik klasik, tapi merupakan karya kontempor, uh, komposer masa kini. Lalu ada classic crossover, musik klasik yang pendekatan musikalnya adalah musik modern. Dalam piano misalnya seperti Alexis French, jadi classical music itu seperti bass, tapi menggunakan... Uh, apa, progresi musik modern seperti 251, lalu ada klasikal konvensional seperti Bach dan Mendelssohn juga. Dan meski namanya klasikal violin, ada juga repertoar lagu pop dengan backing track yang menarik. Nah, inilah keunggulan dari ujian RSL dibanding lembaga sertifikasi internasional lainnya. Yakni bahwa RSL menyediakan begitu banyak pilihan genre musik masa kini, dan yang paling penting, seperti yang tadi Isi bilang, tidak mengkotak-kotakan musik. Jadi mau pop, mau klasikal, ya mau semua genre, yang penting nyampe ke hati. Oke, pada slide berikutnya juga kita lihat beberapa fitur unggulan dari RSL. Bahwa jika Anda menyelesaikan grade 8, maka Anda dapat uh, mendapatkan 6-8 poin dari UCAS. UCAS point adalah uh, poin yang didapat dari the University and College Admission Service. Semua, sebuah badan akreditasi universitas di Inggris. Jadi kalau Anda lulus grade 8 dan ingin kuliah, melanjutkan di Inggris, kuliah musik, Anda tidak harus mulai dari nol lagi, karena Anda sudah mengantongi 6-8 poin dari UCAS. Di samping itu, ada free choice pieces. Ini juga menarik ya, di RSL Indonesia, RSL Award, lalu lagu bebas yang bisa Anda pilih di luar materi yang tercantum di buku. Tentu dengan persyaratan tertentu. Lalu materinya juga tersedia dalam berbagai format, baik cetak maupun digital. Keterangan teknis ini nanti akan saya lanjutkan, namun terlebih dahulu kita akan ikuti detail teknis dari debut, grade 1, dan grade 2. Nah, sekarang kita ke debut dulu ya. Debut ini merupakan level yang crucial. Sebelum menempuh grade 1, meskipun boleh langsung ke grade 1 sebetulnya, Uh, tapi di debut ini banyak detail teknis yang penting dan para guru harus ketahui dengan seksama. Misalnya di materi bukunya itu ada uh, grade exam dan performance certificate. Jadi di dalam RSO ada dua jenis ujian, yaitu ujian grade exam dan performance certificate. Apabila Anda mengambil grade exam, maka selain musik performance, tiga lagu, satu lagu wajib dan dua diantaranya free choice pieces, maka juga akan diujikan technical work dan supporting task. Apabila Anda mengambil performance certificate, maka technical dan supporting task-nya tidak ada. Tetapi uh, Anda cukup merekam 5 lagu tanpa diedit. Kalau Anda ambil live streaming exam, full semuanya diuji. Nah, nanti tentang tata cara ujian kita akan bahas uh, lebih lanjut. Nah, di sini kita ada exam pieces. Exam pieces setiap buku itu ada 10. Ya, ini bukunya seperti ini. Dia ada 10 uh, dari uh, berbagai macam genre. Lalu ada technical exercise, tangga nada, dan technical study. Lalu ada supporting test, yaitu ada sight reading dan improvisation. Loh, kok klasik ada improvisation nih ya? Gitu, bukannya itu jazz. Uh, enggak juga sih, sebenarnya Bach is the master of improvisation. Jadi kita harus belajar juga basically how to improvise. Kelompok berikutnya adalah ear training, dan kelompok terakhir adalah general musicianship atau pengetahuan umum tentang musik. Di sini akan diuji juga, gitu. Ya, instrumen biola itu bagian mananya bow, bagian mana nutnya, bagian mana yang uh, fingerboard, dan segala macam, nanti akan ditanya, tapi itu hanya untuk face-to-face -face exam dan live streaming. Kemudian ada enam petunjuk teknis untuk memainkan skill dan arpeggio. Yang pertama adalah separate bow technique. Jadi satu nada, satu stroke. Jenisnya yang pertama dimainkan secara even note. Ini note-nya semua adalah quaver, dan bow stroke-nya bergantian, down bow and up bow. Ya, dan down up, down up. Lalu ada yang kedua dimainkan long tonic. Tadi yang pertama even, yang kedua long tonic. Apa itu long teknik? Uh, long tonic teknik 
disebut long tonic karena pada not tonic atau not pokoknya durasinya lebih lama dari not lainnya. Jadi lama. Terus, terus. Ya. Not toniknya itu crotchet dan not berikutnya adalah quaver. Long tonic seperti lazimnya orang main skill violin menggunakan down bow. Yang kedua adalah slur teknik. Satu bow, stroke bisa untuk dua not, bisa untuk empat, atau bahkan satu stroke, satu ayunan bow untuk satu oktav atau tujuh not. Jenisnya sama, bisa separate atau long tonic rhythm. Lalu di halaman 10 juga ada ketentuan penting yang berlaku untuk grade 1 sampai grade 8. Yaitu di sini, jadi kayak ada penjelasan tentang uh, tips-tips untuk berlatih teknik. Seperti fingering. Fingering di sini uh, sifatnya hanya suggestion. ya. Jadi dia tidak mempengaruhi penilaian. Yang kedua, pada prinsipnya peserta ujian harus bermain sesuai dengan skornya. Jadi harus exactly as it written, ya, yeah. as in the music sheet. Kecuali kalau misalnya di bagian tertentu, they ask for improvisation, then you could improvise. But otherwise you have to play actually like the notes that written. Yang ketiga, ornamen juga sifatnya usulan, a suggestion saja. Peserta ujian bisa menentukan bentuk ornamennya. Yang keempat, perubahan atau striking untuk lagu yang tidak pure classical masih diperbolehkan sejauh tidak mengubah esensi lagunya. Nah, berikutnya kita akan dengarkan uh, dari debut yaitu All Is Found. Silakan. Hello. So I'm now going to take you through uh, what's required at the debut and grade one levels in the violin exams, starting with the technical exercises and scales. So for debut, the scales that are required, there are three, but they're all essentially the same techniques, um, starting on an open G, followed by an open D, followed by an open A to get the major scales of one octave, which means that we stay in first position on the left hand. Um, we were not moving up at all at this level and the finger positions themselves will all be set at debut. First finger will only have um, its high position to go into, so we won't be using that lower semitone. Second finger also will stay in a high position here, and third finger in its low position, so that we can achieve that major scale. <laughs> Um, so we're just thinking about producing a good tone at this level, making sure the intonation is really secure, um, a nice straight bow and um, smooth interchange across the bow, um, the string crossings rather, I should say. So as we're up on the lower strings, the level of the upper arm um, comes up a little bit higher. And then as we cross strings across to the higher strings, that angle of the upper arm um, sits much, much lower in the elbow. And so on. Um, the sight reading exercises at debut involve just open strings. So we're really only ever focusing there on the rhythm, um, which requires a keen um, sense of bow distribution. And also, um, yeah, basic bow technique and keeping um, a straight bow to produce a clean tone. So, and so on. They're, if they're not using their fingers, it might be perfectly acceptable for some of the violins to hold their violin here instead of at their neck there. So that's also perfectly acceptable if open strings are being used. Then um, the technical exercises have been written mainly to help violinists get a bit more comfortable with the fingers used in their scales and promoting a good intonation. One of them uses um, double stops and that's basically to help um, them have a reference when placing the first finger down on the fingerboard. Where should that go? You've got an open string to tune to always. Um, in this particular study here, which is in 3-4 and has double stops. 
So they can check that they're tuning that um, that first finger next to the open D um, and all the way through the all three finger positions. So it really promotes good intonation in the first position. The piece that I've chosen to speak about in um, the debut level is the Trick, Treat or Tango, simply because it can look a little confusing there with all of the words that um, are used at the beginning and at the end of the piece. And the tapping that's required, the rhythm, they Oke, okay, buku materi ujian uh, sudah dilengkapi oleh latar belakang dari lagunya. Uh, nanti Anda bisa lihat dan bisa baca sendiri. Uh, jadi ada tips untuk memainkan teknik lagunya uh, dan juga ada keterangan mengenai lagunya. Pada All is Town, lengan kanan diharapkan untuk bergerak bebas agar bow stroke-nya bisa mulus. Jadi tidak seperti orang batuk-batuk, gitu kan. Lalu diharapkan juga menghasilkan bunyi yang manis dengan cara menjaga ayunan bow untuk tetap sejajar dengan bridge. Ya, lalu hati-hati uh, dengan bow saat perpindahan tenar. Perhatikan sudut lengan kanan dan selalu perhatikan posisi bow. Ayunan lengan diusahakan membentuk kurva melingkar agar didapatkan intonasi yang layak dan hati-hati dengan tanda istirahat. Jadi kalau ada rest tuh harus benar-benar diperhatikan dan benar-benar nggak boleh ada bunyi. Dan selalu sadar pentingnya peran pengiring, lagu pengiring. Jadi selalu dengarkan uh, backing tracknya supaya Anda bisa sing. Ya. Jadi bukan cuma mainnya benar, tapi apakah bisa sing dengan lagunya. Pergunakan full bow pada bar 9 dan 17, dan hati-hati Anda ketika harus fade out. Dan setiap selesai satu phrase, Anda harus mengangkat bow dari senar selembut mungkin, untuk menghindari bunyi-bunyi yang tidak diinginkan atau smudge. Oke, berikutnya kita ke Lean On Me karya Bill Withers. All is found. One, two, three, four. Lean on me. One, two, three, four. Tadi adalah Lean On Me karya Bill Withers. 
lagu ini gemulai jangan sampai terjebak menjadi terburu-buru dalam memainkannya disarankan sebelum main lagu ini untuk melakukan pemanasan jari kiri ya itu naik turun naik turun dari very slow sampai akhirnya tambah cepat tambah cepat ya supaya bisa mulus pada tanda istirahat di bar kedua dan ketiga bow tetap menempel di senar supaya untuk gesek nada berikutnya sudah siap tetapi hati-hati bow menempel jangan sampai ada bunyinya ya ini bukan piano kalau judulnya udah string we have to be careful karena sebelahnya ada tetangganya ya nah tanda bow down, down bow pada bar 5913 adalah untuk memandu permainan Uh, atau jeda sejenak sebelum menggesek. Untuk technical exercise, Anda bisa pelajari sendiri karena petunjuk dan contohnya sudah sangat jelas ketika Anda membeli bukunya. Yang perlu saya tekankan adalah bahwa di RSL Classical Violin Exam, sejak debut, debut juga sudah ada pentatonic scale. Memang uh, sangat tidak lazim untuk materi ujian violin klasik, tetapi pentatonic scale itu sudah lazim pada blues, jazz, dan rock. Lalu, um, supaya peserta webinar ini juga tahu tentang praktek instruksional dari debut, kita akan ikuti, uh, oh tadi sudah ya, uh, videonya bersama Meet Ruth Elder, nanti sudah diberikan link-nya supaya bisa nonton video YouTube-nya juga. Demikian video instruksional dari debut tadi dan pembahasan tentang debut. Nah, sekarang kita akan uh, melihat bagaimana Uh, Iskandar Wijaya mendemonstrasikan cara mengajar mudah-mudahan sedikit banyak bisa menambah wawasan Anda tentang bagaimana violin itu harus diajarkan, silakan ya, di sini uh, kita adalah satu murid saya dari California uh, San Francisco bernama Alexico um, dan saya akan demonstrasi uh, dengan scales Karena guru saya waktu saya belajar di Jerman hmm. bilang itu penting sekali harus membuat scale tiap hari. Untuk biola itu penting sekali karena intonasi susah banget dan nggak ada yang paling susah dan suling, um, sulit uh, to play a beautiful scale. Yes. It's nothing more difficult than to play a beautiful scale. So I like to go to the basics. And uh, my student Alexi knows itu hey penting. Ya. Yeah. Halo Alexi. Halo. Sekarang Hi. udah malam di San Francisco oh ya. Jam, <laughs> sekarang uh, jam jam tujuh atau delapan malam. <coughs> uh, dan Alexi suka um, uh, latihan scale setiap hari. Sekarang kita uh, presentasi scale C major. We have the C major, right? So uh, yeah. every day we start the day with just long bow strokes. one note at a time please demonstrate one note at a time slowly close to the bridge mm -hmm. full sound full hair
Uh, let me explain. What Alexi is doing now very nicely is she puts her... Uh, Alexi, stop. Uh, she puts the, the left hand before the right hand. Mm. When the left hand is ready, then she can start playing the, the note, not before. We always have to, the rule in our head as violinists, left before right. Okay, continue. The higher we go on the violin, the closer the bow gets to the bridge. Yes. In the high positions, we have to press the left hand a little bit stronger to get a clear sound. Bagus, very good. Now you can uh, move on to two notes per bow. Two notes per bow from, from up there. And, uh, go, go the way down. What's important in the scales is that on every note we have a certain uh, angle of our hand. When we go on the E string we go like this, when we go on the A string we move the elbow, when we go on the D string we move and on the G string because our fingers have to be always curved. You can move on to three notes per bow now. Um, you mean four? Uh, four? Okay, four. Okay. <laughs> for the intonation so maybe you can do it one more time one more <laughs> time is doing nicely when she goes to the high positions uh, she's following with her elbow so the frame of the fingers keeps curved don't ever play like this it will strain your wrist it's not healthy so go around the violin when you go to the high positions um, after eight we are going to do 12 yeah until 12.
happy yet with the intonation, you repeat the 12 until you're happy with the, especially on the way back. One more time. <laughs> So after 12, what do we do usually? We do all on one uh, up, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. All notes up on one bow. Mm. What is important um, in the fast passages, put the bow close to the bridge and ma make the left, left fingers very active so it's clear. One more time. scales we're continuing with arpeggios you can demonstrate three notes at a stroke Just we start uh, one note per bow, right? So and we make a little break so we can uh, assure that it's left before right. What we hear now in Alexis playing was the glissandos. The glissandos is important in the sl slow tempo for you to find the next note. That's why for the students I sometimes encourage to to play the old note on the new bow. So that gives us time to prepare. So the faster we get with the scales, we have to gradually get rid of the glissando, of course, because we want it to be clean. So um, after the three notes, we continue with six notes, and then nine notes, and then all on one bow. But we will spare you that now for time reasons. <laughs> and uh, we're going to continue with uh, Thirds now, thirds. and I want Alexis to just demonstrate how we practice the thirds first. We practice one note by one, right? Can you demonstrate this, please? Um, broken thirds or thirds? Uh, 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 double stops. Um, the regular or broken? Da, 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 da. Uh, broken. Okay. Broken, yeah. The way so. we practice it in the beginning. <laughs> Just normal thirds. Yeah. Alexi. Alexi. Alexi, Alexi. You should not hear me. First, we, like, we practice there.
Very good. Very good. Okay. And then we continue, of course, with two, uh, two nodes per bow, three nodes per bow, four nodes per bow, and so on. Why do we do double stops? The double stops is the best thing for us violinists to develop left hand frame because you need a lot of control and strength in your left hand. When you play thirds, uh, it's important to look at the fourth finger. It has always to be curved. It should never be flat like that. Yeah, Alex is doing it very nicely. Can you demonstrate us now the plain thirds? Plain thirds. <laughs> but legato on one bow. difficult but it's important we we keep doing it every day so we find our way on the fingerboard after that we continue with four four yeah Good. and so forth and then the next one would be eight yeah Wait, should I start from there or from the beginning? From the beginning. Okay. <laughs> between the notes, yeah? You make it legato. It should be one line. One more time. they have to sit, still be synchronized. It has to be always two notes at a time. Yeah? Good. Now the synchronization is better, but uh, it's chopped. So keep the legato, but still synchronized. Enough, enough. 
Uh, after, after that, we move on to the six, but we're going to skip that, and then we're doing octaves. Octaves are probably the most important thing for a violinist to develop left hand frame, because this is the natural position of the hand. And when we know our octave position, our complete intonation becomes better. So let us demonstrate how we practice octaves. <laughs> And then we practice the octaves in the same way like we did the thirds. We do plain octaves, two notes per bow, four notes per bow, eight notes per bow, 12 notes per bow, all on one bow. Um, after that, we do fingered octaves. Can you just um, demonstrate the beginning of the fingered octaves just to show how it's done? Mm -hmm. uh, proper, proper yeah. means one, three, and two, four. We sometimes need it in passages um, where we have octave runs and it needs a lot of clarity. Uh, this is very, very difficult, but I encourage the young students to already start. Alexi is uh, 11 all years old, but I already encourage her to, to practice that to develop her hand strength. And after that, we're doing tenth, right? Can you demonstrate the tenth? Yes. <laughs> So forth. So the tens are a very wide stretch for the violinist hand. So it's important after every practice session of the tens that you shake out your arm <laughs> because you don't want to get tens, right, and injured. So it's important to let's do that now. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Alexi. Yeah, bravo. You should yeah. get rocks award for this. <laughs> you shake it out. You shake your shoulders out. Yeah. So we practice the tens, of course, in the same way: two notes, four notes, eight notes, twelve notes, all on one bow. After that, I develop one more speciality for Alexi, which is, yeah, we're doing a lot of technique these days, uh, which is broken thirds and double stops. For me personally, I prefer to practice broken thirds and double stops because it's very difficult for the left hand and it really develops the hand frame. I'm speaking a lot about hand frame because mm -hmm. hand frame is the most important thing for intonation. I don't know how it's on the piano. Mm -hmm. If your fingers are yeah. crooked like this, probably you're going to hit the wrong note. Yeah. But if you have a good position of your, of your arms, you're most likely to hit the right notes, right? So we're going to de demonstrate just slowly the, the broken thirds. Can you show us? Preparatory? Uh, no, just do it plain oh. to save time. Fingers. 
Yeah. Yeah, so you can see your fingers. Good. The most important thing when we do scales for violin is intonation. We have to be so, so, so um, strict and precise with our intonation because that's the main thing why we do the scale. So usually in our lessons with Alexia, I'm correcting her much more than now. Now it's a presentation. My but God, you're <laughs> so perfectionist. But it's very important. But very well done. You practice the broken thirds very well. This is super difficult. And of course, after that, you pl uh, practice it in the same way. You can, um, for all the participants that didn't um, get the fingering set, it's always one, three, two, four, one, three, two, four, one, three, two, four. And um, if you want a book, uh, you can buy the Carl Flesch scale book. There is everything inside. But I don't usually practice scales with the book. Yeah. I just uh, practice them from memory. And Alexi does too, actually. So um, yeah, that's it about the scales. There's other possibilities for more difficult scales. Even afterwards, you can bro do broken six and double stops. You can do octave arpeggios. You can do fingered octave arpeggios. There is, you can go crazy with scales. But um, most important is that you do it regularly. Every day a little bit. doesn't have to be long. It can be half an hour. can be one hour. My teacher encouraged me to practice one hour of scales. But Alexi is very young, so uh, you do how, how much scales do you do per, per day? Maybe 30 minutes, 20 minutes? Yeah, 20 minutes about. Yeah. So that's enough for this age. And then later we can, uh, of course, grow. And there's always a way to improve. But well done. Thank you so Thank much, you. Alexi. Bravo. Thank you so much. Yeah. If my student practice like that, and <laughs> if I that perfectionist, <laughs> Maybe I get 30 Rockstar Awards, yeah? <laughs> yeah, and then I, uh, we think pianists, we as a pianist, we think practicing scale is hard. But look at the violin, <laughs> my gosh. It's, it's really hard. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really hard. And you can hear everything, everything intonation you can hear in the scale. Yes, and then you could uh, land on the wrong notes, yes. and then there's also the smudges uh, when yes. you change the strings. Yes. Yeah, so many things that could go wrong yes. in violin, right? Yeah. Oh, so jadi jangan malas ini practicing scales, scales, scales. Yeah. How many minutes a day? Well, I recommend 30 minutes is oh, enough. I thought you but <laughs> when you when you are when I was a student mm. in college. I did maybe one hour a day. One hour yeah. only for scales. Only for scales. Yeah. Okay. Hear that, people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now uh, we are going to continue for the great one. Isi dan pokok materi syllabusnya sama dengan debut, tapi kita uh, bisa dengarkan cuplikannya dari round dance dan the skater waltz. Round dance. One, two, three, four.
tadi adalah Rondes dari uh, Bella Bartok, Bapak Musik Klasik Modern. Pada buku itu di halaman ke-23, Anda juga bisa lihat uh, first marka performance-nya adalah Lento. Artinya tiap nada harus tidak uh, tidak putus-putus, harus connected well. Juga ada Dolce yang artinya sweet. Nah, bagaimana, apa yang dimaksud dengan Dolce? Seberapa manis, how sweet, ya seperti singing out. Atau orang bernyanyi. Juga sepanjang lagu dinamikanya adalah piano dan pianissimo. They very soft and very soft. Jadi para guru violin, Anda dituntut untuk bisa mengajarkan pada murid Anda bagaimana cara memproduksi soft dan very soft. Nah, this is very hard. ya Karena menurut menuntut sudut gesekan dan stabilitas uh, dari posisi bow. Jika Anda ingin murid Anda mendapatkan hasil yang baik, Distinction, Anda harus uh, melatih murid Anda pada bagian crescendo dan decrescendo. Mulai dari akhir crescendo dan decrescendo itu harus persis sama curve-nya. Lalu uh, yang kedua kita akan dengarkan The Skater Waltz. The Skater's Waltz. One, two, three. adalah karya dari Emil Waldteufel, The King of Waltz, seangkatan dengan Johann Strauss. Meskipun tidak ada tanda markanya, Anda harus melatih murid Anda untuk sebisa mungkin menampilkan rasa waltz dengan cara memberi aksen pada beat pertama dalam tiap bar. Juga karena judulnya adalah Skater Waltz, lagu ini dimainkan e, meluncur lancar seperti orang main ice skating atau selancar es. Di grade 1 ini juga uh, ada passage untuk pentatonic scale dan demonstrasi tentang dinamika. Uh, lalu sekarang kita akan berlanjut ke grade 2. Nih, kita dengarkan cuplikannya dari Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast. 1, 2, 3, 4. Thank you. 
tadi adalah Beauty and the Beast dari uh, Alan Menken yang merupakan soundtrack film yang terkenal. Anda perhatikan skornya pada halaman 15 ada banyak slur sampai 4 nada. Nah ini menuntut ayunan bow yang stabil. Juga ada modulasi dari C major ke A major. Bagian ini harus diperhatikan jika murid Anda ingin mendapatkan distinction style lagi. Mestinya ada kontras yang dalam Uh, dari C major ke A major. Jadi diperhatikan yang A major harus lebih bright, cemerlang, dan very climax. Karena di filmnya itu menggambarkan The Beast yang berubah dan berjuang okay. untuk menjadi seorang Prince Charming. Nah, berikutnya kita dengarkan Menuit in G dari Johann Sebastian Bach. Menuit in G One, two, three. Johan Sebastian Bach, nah, ini lagu yang saya yakin semua orang tahu ya, sebuah Lover Concerto Mini, konser mini tentang cinta, dari buku persembahan Johan Sebastian Bach untuk istrinya Ana Magdalena, untuk keyboard, karena waktu itu belum ada piano ya. Di bar pertama, perhatikan ada forte, keras, kemudian menjadi piano atau lembut. Mohon dicermati perubahan ini, jangan sampai menimbulkan kesan mendadak atau shock gitu ya, karena ini bukan subito, jadi kontrasnya harus halus. Di bar ke-25 juga ada crescendo yang poco a poco, artinya little by little. Ini sulit karena murid harus mempertahankan gesekannya supaya tetap rata even dan gradasi dinamikanya tetap dapat terdengar. Sekian dari uh, piano grade 1 dan grade 2. Berikut ini akan kita dengarkan lagi uh, da, apa, pengajaran dari Iskandar Wijaya secara online dengan muridnya yang bernama Luka. Silakan. Ya, sekarang adalah murid kedua. Nama Luka Swang, dia umur 12. Dan untuk um, murid saya bilang itu penting harus uh, latihan etut dan kapris. Etut dan kapris oh, oh. Uh, seperti the bridge between the scales and the pieces. Hmm. Karena the etut um, combines technique and musicality. So it's important to practice etut so we can make a connection between the simple scales and the, the pieces of the repertoire, like the violin concerto or the sonata, stuff like that. So I encourage the student to practice caprices, and Lucas learned uh, Paganini number five. So what do we do when we practice Paganini number five? Because 
um, Lucas is very young, obviously, and he never played Paganini before. So in the beginning, we practice every note just separately, just one note at a time. Can you demonstrate how we practice? Um, the, the Paganini cut. Left before right, very good. On the G string, we have to make sure that our fourth finger is in a good position when we hit it. And the fingers have to have a very stable feeling because that will give us more security in the faster tempo. The slow practice is like planting the seed into the ground. It's like programming your head for perfect intonation and technical perfection. You have to do it in the slow tempo. It's not possible to do it in the fast tempo. So make sure when you play the fourth finger on the on the second position that it's really stable and curved, yeah? Okay. Yes. Good. Left is first, and then when he knows 100% it is going to be good, he's playing. Continue. Shift, very good. Good. Very good, until here. So this is very important. Of course, this takes a lot of time to go through the whole piece. And sometimes you may feel it's boring, but it's actually not. You can consider it like a meditation. You know, you go deep into every note and you try to listen so carefully into every note for the perfect intonation. Good. After that, the second step would be to carefully connect the notes, to erase the gap between the notes. So can you demonstrate us how you play it slowly but connected? to phrase a little bit yeah we go with the musicality because it's also important to practice musicality slowly good continue <laughs>
after this process is done, we can slowly start to speed it up using the metronome. Then the metronome, why? Because it helps us to objectively say, okay, we are in this tempo and in this tempo. Uh, I wouldn't recommend to overdo metronome practice because it kills musicality sometimes. But for this kind of study, it's okay to speed it up into tempo. Do you have the metronome now, by any chance? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So give us uh, some good middle tempo. Uh, and, and. musically already in a slow tempo yeah so we don't become like a robot <laughs> to speed up in the metronome going in uh, 120 going up in increments of five so if we start 120 we go 125 130 135 and so on until we reach the final tempo so um, now president us please 125 just the beginning <laughs> like a robotic exercise. I think it's very dangerous that we see the etudes as just technical exercise. We have to always find the music inside uh, of the studies because later we want to apply it to the pieces, right? So you can see that he's shaping the phrases, he's building up the dynamics, and it's important to practice that in the slow tempo. Otherwise, it will never come. Um, so after we do that, 
we speed up until what is our final tempo? I don't even remember. Uh, I don't know. Like two. Can you give me an example of something like? 100, 160, 70. Um, um, uh, it's uh, it's presto, yeah? Um. yeah. <laughs>
motion is still not the final tempo, right? Da ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da should be the tempo. One, two, three, four. <clears throat> that you planned into the slow tempo. So great job, Lucas. I can see, still see it's there. <laughs> Bravo, and um, for demonstrating us how we, how we practice, how we work. Yeah. Okay, demikianlah akhir webinar RSL Classical Violin ini. Atas nama pribadi dan RSL Indonesia, saya sampaikan banyak terima kasih untuk our guest star today, Iskandar Wijaya. Very, very strict and perfectionist teacher as well as uh, also a great performer house of piano dan melangka para teknisi kru produksi atas segala upaya bagi terselenggaranya webinar ini ya berikut ini kita akan dengarkan ilir-ilir ya silakan
All right. Ladies and gentlemen, boleh kita berikan virtual applause dulu ya untuk sesi kita pada hari ini for Iskandar Wijaya and also Miss Jelia Megawati Heru. Wow, luar biasa ya. Saya sudah lihat tadi ya materinya bagus-bagus banget. Kemudian Alexi dan Lucas juga keren banget ya. Boleh dong kita berikan apresiasi dulu ya teman-teman ya. Ternyata memang betul-betul dengan pengajaran yang baik, pastinya bisa juga membangun talenta yang sangat luar biasa. Nah sekarang kita akan masuk ke Q&A session, di mana saya akan mempertanyakan beberapa pertanyaan yang sudah masuk kepada Iskan Rewijaya dan juga mungkin Miss Jalia Heru ya. Kita akan ngobrol sama-sama ya. Uh, Izi dan juga Miss Jalia. So, uh, the first question ini ada pertanyaan yang uh, sangat fundamental dan mungkin menjadi sebuah masalah yang dihadapi oleh most of the teachers all over the world maybe adalah uh, how to motivate our students supaya mereka itu want to learn uh, attitude setiap hari. Meskipun kita udah memang explaining all the time again and again and again, but then most of the students itu kan maunya play song aja gitu ya nggak mau yang basic basic gitu bagi mereka mungkin boring gitu how to create motivation for them I think the most motivating thing for the students is their own progress if they feel like they're growing and their skill is growing I think they cannot wait to play every day so my approach actually for the repertoire is to give them a piece that is a little bit too hard So they are made motivated to challenge themselves to practice more. If the piece is too easy, I think the, the kids don't have the motivation because they can do it anyway. But if it's a little bit over their limit, they will uh, keep trying. Oke, okay, so give challenges ya, sehingga anak-anak ini ngerasa, kok kayaknya saya belum bisa nih yang ini ya, sehingga mereka bisa keep on do, uh, going, keep on trying. Alexi actually... Uh, Alexi actually always tells me, please give me a harder piece. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow, very competitive and ambitious student ya, Alexi ya. <laughs> but then, berarti kita juga sebagai teachernya harus kasih tahu juga ya. You have done this far, you, give, uh, you have done this uh, very well, atau apa yang belum bagus, sehingga our student juga bisa mengukur sejauh mana mereka sudah berhasil mengeksekusi our challenges. Bukan begitu, Miss Jalia? Ya, mau diterangin sedikit tentang Alexi dari Iskandar. Yes. Ya, Alexi and Lucas uh, both started uh, learning with me one year ago via Zoom only. So um, we have met once before in Italy, but that was a long time because we studied with the same uh, teacher, first violin teacher, Suzuki teacher, Mrs. Mann. And uh, in this year that they've been studying now with me via Zoom, Uh, Alexia and Lucas both have uh, menang beberapa kompetisi uh, hanya semua online karena sekarang pandemi enggak ada uh, kompetisi live tapi online and both of them are winner of the American Protégé competition and will perform in Carnegie Hall. Wow, <laughs> wow, keren banget ya. Tadi juga tuh udah lihat ya bagaimana penampilannya Alexi yang dia tuh benar-benar ngerti banget apa yang di request sama teachernya dan juga Lucas ya tadi di at the end of the webinar yang juga keren banget. Thank you Iskandar. Uh, the next one is any particular tips to teach vibrato untuk student? Yeah, vibrato like every violin technique has to be uh, learned slowly first. So I encourage to count your vibrato swings with the metronome. Usually I start with the metronome and slow click like 60. I actually just did this exercise while we were watching the <laughs> video because it just helps to warm up the fingers. After that you do double stitch. then second finger and so on. So it's good to play slowly first and then speed it up and make sure your hand is not tense. Okay. What about the tips on vibrato on artificial harmonics called flash? Do you have artificial any? Artificial harmonics called flash? Yes. Um, for the artificial harmonics, it's important that 
the first finger is round and the fourth finger is flat. So you have a broader spectrum. About the artificial harmonics, I practice them also in the same way I practice double stops, which means I place the left hand before the right hand. First I check if the G is in tune. So that means I play the old harmonic on the old bow before I start the new bow. You hear a little bit of the new? So I make sure that I have the harmonic safe because harmonic is very difficult to speak sometimes so you have to prepare the harmonic. Okay, so uh, last one is kind of uh, the question is for the beginner. Kira-kira uh, bagi mereka yang baru mau mulai belajar biola, uh, gimana sih postur yang baik? I mean like the head and also the hand posture and all the things yang harus menjadi sebuah fundamental bagi mereka-mereka yang mau mulai belajar. Uh, for the posture, it has is very important that it's always the most natural posture. Don't lift your right shoulder, don't lift your left shoulder. It has to be in the natural position like this. Um, and then for the hand position, as I said before, it's always important to keep this hand frame natural and curved. Don't place your fingers flat and don't let your second wrist collapse. This should not ever happen because that's painful. It should always be curved. When you go up in the high position, don't play like that. It will strain your wrist. Play like that. Keep it in one line. As for the right hand, don't ever let this happen. That's no good. Keep a straight wrist, one line, and just try to breathe naturally and relax from time to time. Roll your shoulders. Um, I mean, this is a long subject because posture is it's like a science yeah you can always improve your posture it's always possible to be more relaxed to be more natural but uh, try to keep uh, watching yourself in the mirror while you practice it helps okay so uh, sejujurnya kayak masih banyak banget yang pengen ditanyakan and didiskusikan but then because our time is very limited mungkin kita mau denger dong closing statement from Iskandar and also uh, from Miss Jalia about music education and also about how to become a professional apapun yang mau disampaikan kepada teachers and all of the musicians yang hadir pada hari ini yeah I think the most important thing is always the love for the music. If that is not the beginning, why are we doing all of this, right? So we have to fall in love with our music, with the violin, the instrument, or whatever instrument you play. Um, I sometimes encourage the students to sing their lines because the human voice is the most natural thing and we should always try to kind of uh, imitate the human voice a little bit. Um, and I think it's important to keep a balance in everything. Don't overdo your technique and just do technique and then, and then nothing else. But keep a balance. It's, the technique so, should serve you to become more free as an interpreter and to express yourself more. Because in the end, that's what it's all about. To express yourself on the stage, to reach people's hearts and, and to kind of improve yourself also as a person. Because practicing uh, the violin or any instrument is like a battle against yourself. You're trying to become a better person in the end. So um, keep a balance. Don't be too hard on yourself. Uh, be compassionate with yourself while you practice. It's important. Uh, don't say this is bad or this is negative. Just say I can improve. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up one more time for Iskandar Wijaya. Wow, ya yeah, jadi kita benar-benar harus betul-betul uh, uh, cinta dan juga not overdo everything tapi semuanya keep in balance ya teman-teman ya. Semoga apa yang disampaikan oleh Iskandar Wijaya and also oleh Miss Jalia bisa menjadi input, menjadi insight yang baik untuk bisa menjadi teacher yang lebih berkualitas lagi dalam melakukan pengajaran kepada para students dan harapannya a good teacher can always 
uh, teach a really good student ya sehingga kita bisa melihat maestro-maestro biola lainnya coming from Indonesia ya amin 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 once again thank you so much Iskandar Wijaya for sharing with us this uh, afternoon and also thank you so much Miss Jelia for accompanying all, us all at the webinar dan saya Bayu Aditama mohon pamit turun diri and for the last one today kita akan menyaksikan a very special performance by Iskandar Wijaya Thank you.